highest heavens came a majestic civilization. Its splendor once lost. Now, the divine culture has returned. Experience Shen Yun. Well, good evening. You are watching Asian Review, and our special guest today is the regular Tuesday host of Think Tech's Asian Review, uh, Hong Jian. And Hong, nice to have you with us, and you get to relax, and I have to host this show today. Well, th <laughs> thank you to, for doing the hosting, and uh, great to be in this seat. You know, ladies and gentlemen, we have a, a, a very unusual program today because we're going to talk about kind of the, the, the insides and outs and what's behind the scenes of this famous production. Uh, is it a Chinese production? Uh, I would say it's Chinese production, culturally. Culturally, but it's not from China, is it? It's not made in China. Not made in China. And we'll talk more about that later. It's called The Xin Yuan Show. And maybe you've seen advertisements, uh, whether you're, you're here in Honolulu or you're in some other city in the world. You've seen advertisements. You wonder what's really behind this show. And uh, we did give you a little taste of it to get started. And we're going to give you some, some additional taste of it just so you get a feel for what we're going to be talking about today. And so, um, Control Room, would you go ahead and uh, let's show our audience the next two videos here. 5,000 years of Chinese music and dance in one night. Beautiful, a nimble mastery. An explosion of color and sound. Divine culture returns. Experience Shen Yun. For showtimes and tickets, visit ShenYun.com. I've been coming to this theater for, oh, about 40, 45 years. It's an art form that I'm not familiar with, but I certainly loved it tonight. Overwhelmed. Overwhelmed by the quality of the dancing. And the person on, on, on stage who played. That's a real virtuoso. It is divine. Those performances, they bring the Chinese civilization back to life. Coming to the Blaisdell Concert Hall, May 7th through 9th. Buy your tickets now at the box office or Ticketmaster. So what we want to do in this program is to explore the background and what this, this whole... Actually, it's not a Chinese production. And we'll, we'll argue about well, that. Oh, we'll oh, get to that. We'll get to that a little further <laughs> down the road. I know what you think, ladies and gentlemen, but it's not what you think. And so, uh, Hong, well, let's, let's start off with what kind of show is the, the whole Xin Yuan production? It, it's new every year, but what, what, what is it really? How would you describe it? Um, there are so many ways and words you can describe the show, and the audience members in Honolulu or in Hawaii may have seen it because uh, it, uh, Shen Yun came to Honolulu first in 2008 and has been coming here every year with a brand new production. So what is Shen Yun? Let's start from the name. So the name Shen Yun, um, S-H-E-N-Y-U-N, Shen means divine. Hmm. Yuan means essence or rhythm. So divine essence or divine rhythm. So you already get a little bit of a taste of what that is about. So it's really about uh, the bringing back of the authentic ancient Chinese culture, drawing from stories and legends from 5,000 years of Chinese history. And especially focusing more on the essence of uh, the spiritual essence of the Chinese culture, the Confucianism, Taoism, and Buddhism, and the values of goodness and So is that, is, that, is, that, is that really the goal of the, the, the whole production? Um, so I have to uh, you know, say a disclaimer that I don't represent the show. I only represent somebody who is a Shen Yun fan, and I've been a volunteer in Honolulu uh, to promote, help promote the Shen Yun show. So uh, what's the goal? From my understanding, the goal of Shen Yun is really about bringing back uh, to start the revival and the renaissance of Chinese culture. 
So give just a little bit of background. Chinese culture, we talk about the ancient Chinese culture, 5,000 years of civilization and history, continuous, the, the longest lasting civilization in the world. And in China, the homeland of Chinese culture, much of this has been undermined uh, outright destroyed. And this is this was a product of the Cultural Revolution. Cultural Revolution. China and was uh, the the idea was to basically wipe the old off the map, right? Exactly. That's the, under the Communist Party's rule. And even today, it's still very hard to see the revival of the authentic Chinese culture in China today. So, therefore, um, Shen Yun's goal is to bring that back and to share with not just Chinese. Shen Yun is not a Chinese show. Well, Shen Yun is a world-class show. That's how I say it. It's not an ethnic show. It's a world-class show. It's a show for everybody uh, to share the cultural values and the stories and the essence of the Chinese culture with anybody in the world. Where, where is this production, the Shen, Yu, Shen Yun show, where, is, where has it been performed? Uh, so it's been uh, since 2006, uh, Shen Yun was established. And uh, I it's guess we, let's recent. talk about the later, like why yeah. it's not produced in China, not made in China. Uh, it's headquarters in, in New York City. And uh, since 2006, it has been expanding its shows in um, different cities, countries in the world. So right now, Shen Yun has four uh, equally sized touring companies touring um, different parts of the world. So the sh company that's coming here is called Shen Yun International Company. Right now, it's in the Asia Pacific region. Just finished uh, sold out shows, 37 sold out shows in Taiwan, and is, is uh, heading to Australia, New Zealand. After they perform there, they are coming here in, in Honolulu in uh, May, early May, May 7th through 9th three days, three nights, only three shows. What what really makes, uh, what, are, what are people's reactions to this who are not Chinese? Or, uh, it's interesting. Or ethnic Chinese, what, the, what are their reactions, you know? The, um, if you look at, you know, the, the, one of the video is, is about uh, the uh, audience review of the show uh, in 2013, and you can see a lot of them are non-Chinese. They are critics uh, from all over the world, and uh, people have been giving this show such a high remark. And uh, I can you know, just read out some of those. The highest and the best of what humans can produce. This is by Olivia uh, Brown Klang. Uh, it's a music teacher in Canada. And uh, by, uh, this is uh, Ken Wells, former lead dancer of the English National Ballet. And he said, I quote, the Absolutely, the number one show in the world. Absolutely, the best. And this and this show is in route to Honolulu, is it not? It's in route. Yeah, it's uh, this particular company is performing in Australia right now. And they and will be here when? May seven to nine. Three three shows only. Three shows at the Bla Blaisdell. Blaisdell Concert Hall. Okay. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, one of the things that that um, I have heard about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm is and I, and I guess maybe we should talk about what 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 is it that makes this Shin Yuan show so appealing to people across all cultures and ethnicities and diversities what why is why is this because at one level it seems like it's a Chinese show but it's not and that, so that's right, why yeah. why what makes it so appealing to other people and throughout the world uh, let me speak about a few key components of the show and just give people a little bit more of the taste of the show and what's what's going on uh, with the show uh, if we can have a slide uh, one uh, and uh, then, uh, so, so you can see slide number one, and then we can move to slide number two. And you can see these are traditional motifs okay. of the Chinese okay. culture. The first one over there is showing this beautiful background. It's almost like heavenly image. And there are a lot of uh, fairy tales, tales in China. And the second one is the phoenix dance. Okay. So um, the, uh, there are several parts of the show. One is the, uh, the dance itself. It's classical Chinese dance. And uh, they have, uh, Shen Yun has the best classical Chinese dancers in the world. So they perform these uh, traditional uh, motifs and themes. And uh, they also have uh, um, 
uh, we can talk a little bit more about the dance. So the dance looks like the Western ballet, but it's really not Western ballet. It's a classical Chinese dance that is a very unique dance system uh, that has been in existence for thousands of years. And then the second part of the dance is the ethnic dance. That's uh, in slide number three and four, please. So um, this slide number three is showing the, um, the Manchu dance. The Manchu is uh, one of the dynasties. Okay, uh, Manchu uh, dynasty. Uh, uh, not, it's a dynasty, and also uh, Qing dynasty is actually a Manchu dynasty, uh, right before the, re the Republic of China in 1911. And uh, it's also ethnic group in China. So, and then uh, the next one over here is uh, a, in southern China is the ethnic group, the Dai group. So as you can see, the, uh, it's not just the dance that's showing the ethnic dance, but also the dress, the background. And we could talk about a little bit about the background a little later. And so then the next one is, uh, let's look at slide number five and six. So you have the uh, classical motif, you have the ethnic dance, and then you have storied dances. Right, this right. one in particular came here a couple of years ago, this is about the, the Han Dynasty uh, terracotta warrior. Okay. Well, a lot of people know about the sure. Chinese history and, and know about that warrior. So that's uh, the terracotta warrior, the Han Dynasty warrior. Uh, sorry, it's a Qin, Qin Dynasty earlier than that. Qin Dynasty, Dynasty warrior reenacted uh, and, and coming to the stage to dance. And the next one uh, over here is a, a story. Uh, from uh, um, on the water margin, which is a very well-known sto story uh, group in, in China. So it's a lot of these story dances. Okay. And then we have the orchestra. So the next one over here is uh, the orchestra is a blending of a Chinese and Western musical instruments. So the sound is very, very unique. Wait, and wait, wait. It's a, it's a blending of classical Chinese and Western music. How does it sound, well, right? Yeah, what, what, what is that like? That's, that's okay, I want to just, uh, uh, what, what I have here is, uh, if you can hear. Oh, may not. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, so this one here, uh, this is one of the background music of the Manchu dance. And the main uh, tune is played by the two-string violin called Arhu, which is the Chinese instruments. And then you're going to hear later the background that is a full Western orchestra um, supported um, by the, the, all the different kinds of orchestra mu musical instruments. So we can just play this background a little bit. You know, the, thing that, thing, the thing that is comes to mind as you're playing this and I'm listening to this the classical Chinese music and uh, I, I can hear uh, the the a Western style orchestra yeah is you know you've said in a couple of different places that actually this is not a Chinese show and it kind of reminds me of the whole concept of of fusion cuisine in eating where, you know, here in Hawaii, one of the, the, the great chefs that has introduced the concept of blending East and West together has been Roy's restaurant to, to, to blend uh, foods, fusion from all over the Asia Pacific region. And this is, is it not, a, a fusion in some sense of, of entertainment? Uh, it definitely is, and I, but I would not call it a fusion, and this is why. It, it, this is why uh, the Shenyan phenomena is very, very interesting. Um, so the Shenyan, if you look at the forms, um, it's blending different forms. It's, it's a classical Chinese dance, which is a very authentically Chinese ancient tradition ethnic dance. And then you have the blending of the Western orchestra, so sound like a branching out the right. East and West. And the other thing that's so interesting uh, is the use of the backdrop, which is a digital okay, backdrop. Okay, okay, now I want to talk about the backdrop before we go to the break here, because this is really important. I'm really interested. I've had people told me about, oh, you got to see the wall, the wall, the concert right. wall. The, the, so the, so the, what, the tell us about the backdrop. What, are, uh, what okay. is so cool about the backdrops that they use for Shen Yuan performance? Um, you know, Shen Yuan uh, does the stories from different parts of China, different dynasties in China. You have thousand years of history to draw on. But all of these different stories happen in different places in different time. How do you set the stage? 
And uh, what Shen Yun is ingenious in doing is they have a digital backdrop. It's not a still image. It's a, it's a, a almost like a movie, but more than a movie. So what you have, uh, even in some of the uh, the videos we saw, and later on we maybe we'll we'll see a little bit more, is uh, they set the scene. So okay. if it's a battle scene, if it's a Tang Dynasty scene, a Han Dynasty scene, court scene, it's a, a grassland scene, a landscape scene, the uh, the Tibetan mountain scene. So it's all set in the background, and uh, a lot of the stories have referred to the Buddhist paradise, to the the heavens. So the story of the monkey monkey king, it's a journey to the west, is played every year. It's a different episode every year. And, uh, Jeez, and, and you have the monkey king come to the stage, and he's going to fly to the mountains, and he's going to fly to the to the uh, heavens. And he flies and, into and the background. Does. And he does. He fly. He gets off the stage and fly to the background. And then you have a lot of stories of the divine beings interacting with the human beings, and these divine beings will come fly from the background and onto the stage. And these people literally jump to the I stage. I mean, this sounds just so incredible, and we've got more to go. And stay with us, Hong, because I, I want to talk with you further about this. But when we come back after the break, we're going to talk about who are the Xin Yuan performers. And uh, just as a little, a little heads up, they're not all Chinese. Interesting. Stay with us. We'll see you on the other side of the break. Hello, I'm Jay Fidel of ThinkTech. On March 27th uh, at the YWCA downtown, Lania Kea, uh, we're having a luncheon program, a luncheon panel program uh, we call the Midterm Legislative Report. We're going to present our 2014 legislative midterm update uh, featuring Bob Toyofuku of Hawaii Advocates as our moderator and a panel of leading state finance officials uh, who will tell you about what's going on in the legislature about money this session. It's really important. Senator David Ige, chair of the Senate Ways and Means Committee, Representative Aaron Ling Johansson, co-vice chair of the House Finance Committee, Representative Sylvia Luke, chair of the House Finance Committee, uh, Calbert Young, State Budget and Finance Director, all the people who are very important who know about the state fiscal policy, the state finances this session. You know, they say we have a spare $884 million. How much do we really have? The Council of Revenues changed its mind about projections. And how are we going to spend that money or not? What effect will our, you know, current $40 billion of unfunded liabilities have on all of this? And in election year, what are the real priorities that are going to determine the money bills and the final result of the 2014 legislature as far as you are concerned? We'll cover current f fiscal issues, bills of interest, interest the business community, and we'll look at the provisions, political dynamics, probabilities, price tags of crossover and passage this year. It'll be very interesting to find out what is going to happen here uh, as far as your bills are concerned and as far as state initiatives are concerned. It's an essential program for anybody who wants to know the fiscal state of the state or if you want to network with the legislators and like-minded attendees uh, who are likewise interested in the subject. Sign up on thinktechhawaii.com. We look forward to seeing you there. Aloha. We're back. You're watching Asian Review. We're broadcasting live from Pioneer Plaza right here in the heart of downtown Honolulu, uh, the belly of the business beast, as I like to call it. And uh, uh, I'm your host, David Day, and the regular host of this show is actually our special guest today. We've roped her into um, discussing some things that she is uh, quite knowledgeable about, and this is Ms. Hong Jing. Good to see you again. Yeah. Nice to have you. Thanks for coming back and not giving up at the commercial break. <laughs> sure. Right. You know, if you just joined the show, we were talking about the very unusual um, interactive kind of a 3D concept uh, digital technology that is used in a Shin Yuan production uh, live on stage, and that is the backdrop. And so, uh, you know, where were we when the commercial break? Uh, on this, you were describing how the, the, the they are able to use this background so that the performers go into the scene and come out of the scene. And you really expand the stage to this whole universe 
wherever you want to go. It's just amazing. And uh, it, uh, one of the reviewers, um, Richard Kanema, uh, reviewed three, 4,000 shows since uh, 1942 of a Broadway shows. And he said, this show is mind blowing. Of course, uh, so many different components of it. And one part of it is the backdrop. It's, uh, you know, people see it as, a, oh my God, I've never seen anything like this. So, so it's setting the stage so that uh, you can really expand your story to talk about any legends, any story, talk about the paradise, talking about the heavens, which is uh, very often, uh, you know, the mo very important message in the Chinese traditional stories. So let's do this. Let's, let's show our audience here the same video that we've showed them at the outset of this show, but ask them to concentrate on the background this time. Shall we do focus that? Focus on that. Focus, yeah, right. focus on the background, and uh, uh, control room. Let's let's replay for our audience uh, video number one again. From the highest heavens came a majestic civilization. Its splendor once lost. Now, the divine culture has returned. Experience Shen Yun. Hong, let's start to shift our focus a little bit in this conversation. And what 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 we really want to talk about are the artists that 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 make this whole show happen. And and uh, you know, right before the break, one of us made the comment that that the dancers, the artists, the performers are not all Chinese, and uh, not uh, not all Chinese from China. Not from China. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so they are they're international performers from all over the world, but. Can we fairly say they are of Chinese ethnicity, or not uh, all? The uh, the dancers all are okay. all are Chinese ethnicity, and the other thing that's very very important to identify who are the dancers of Shenyun is is their value, and uh, maybe this next video would give a good sense of what kind of values the Shenyun performers um, hold up and. Uh, which is the important part of what's making the Shenyun show okay, so amazing. So ladies and gentlemen, what we're going to do is go to a story uh, having to do with a lead dancer, Chelsea Kai, and uh, we'll join you after we show you a little bit about the background of Chelsea Kai here. Uh, Traditional Chinese dance requires someone to be very poised. It requires you to be very focused. Um, I think I'm pretty good at the control part because when I dance, sometimes even when I want to look at the mirror, I can't see myself. I don't know why. My eyes just keep looking forward, but I don't see anything. I just see straight ahead. So maybe that's why I'm better at controlling and um, very focused, being focused. When I was really young, my mom wanted to sculpt me into someone who can present traditional values and someone very ladylike. So she sent me to learn all sorts of different kinds of things like pipa is a traditional Chinese instrument and she sent me to learn flute and calligraphy and she also sent me to learn dancing which she hoped to help me have good posture when I grow up. It helps me in everyday life because I realized that all the traditional values that um, people were throwing away in, in uh, modern society right now are actually very important and you need them if you want to dance with Chinese dance well. It's not just something shallow, you really need something on the inside and deep understanding to be able to present something nice on the outside. So um, I started to learn more uh, how to act and dress more traditionally. I'm very happy to meet these young dancers here at Shenyun because even though we all have very diverse personalities, we all value the same traditional values. 
I love it when we have uh, different parties or different activities like birthday parties. Since we spend so much time together, we already um, know each other so well that even on stage, we can feel each other. That's how we can be so together. Even with so many people, it all seems like one person dancing. When we dance, we're always conscious about people around us and to be the same and to have the same movements were amazing, you know, the, the way they just all worked together as one. It, it was just like looking like one object moving around, incredible. Not just the individual dancers, but for everyone to dance together to, to really perform so well as a group. I thought that was very impressive. Super, absolutely. <laughs> Just like how our MC says, every dance has its own unique meaning. You know, one single chopstick is easier to break than a bunch. Hence, people need to pull in their efforts together. Ah, yes, just like on the harsh plains of Mongolia. Actually, this concept applies to every dance that we do. When I do an important role in a dance, and when I'm dancing with everyone else on the side, I don't feel any different because um, if one person does well on a stage, it doesn't mean anything. What the audiences see is not just one person, they look at the whole picture. So everyone needs to do well and we all know that. Even when, say, when one person is dancing, everyone behind me or on the side is supporting and encouraging me and that helps me to do well. So it's everyone's strength. We just think about how to make our dancing better and how to be a better person and that helps us also on stage to be focused and present the right message to the audience. Beautiful, beautiful. Love the spirituality in it because it touched my heart. I, I could, it was a divine message there and the message was wonderful. Each of the dancers and the singers had that core, that groundedness themselves as the so they were not just performing, but actually living the message that they were dancing. That's, I, can, I can relate with those messages very much, so yeah, very hopeful. It was beauty for the eyes and beauty for the brain and beauty for the heart. So I'm walking away very inspired and um, full with optimism. I just feel like it's almost like being reborn and starting anew again in my life and letting go of a lot of pain and illusions, so that's when I felt very teary. I believe that art forms created with pure and clean intentions will radiate positive energy that can benefit the audience. I want the audiences to get something out of our show, to receive message and to realize that there's more beyond the materialistic things in life. So even when they are depressed, they can pull themselves through depressions or even bad situations and keep going in life. You've been watching Chelsea Kai, a lead dancer with the Shenyuan troupe, and uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe you know, uh, whether Chelsea is an American or not, but let me ask you this, Hong. In that dance troupe, are there American performers, Chinese-American? Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, definitely. So they draw from uh, Chinese from China, Chinese from uh, um, U.S., Canada, Hong Kong, Taiwan, and France, Australia, everywhere in the world. The key is that all the dancers are Chinese, uh, Chinese uh, having Chinese heritage. Some may be mixed, and Chelsea apparently is a completely, uh, you know, Chinese. One other question, Chinese. one other question here. 
I noticed that some of the the uh, when when some of the video shots when when the uh, girls were at the bar, it looked to me like classical French or Russian ballet. Mm -hmm. I, is that what it is? Um, some of the forms may remind you of the ballet dance, like uh, you know, have the head, the, the, the legs up with the uh, feet straight, and and those. Uh, but if you see the show. Uh, I'm not a dancer myself, so one thing I learned about the Chinese dance is that, uh, for example, the Western ballet is very much straight and square um, kind of a form, but in the Chinese dance is very different if you see it. It's all about round movement. There's no straight square movements. And they have, a, 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 we didn't see here, a lot of tumbling techniques. And the men dancing in particular are so much, um, you know, our martial arts type of movements, and dancing and flips and jumps. They jump in midair and they flip in midair. So there are a lot of those movements that you do not see in the Western ballet. And the other thing that's interesting is the very uh, expressiveness of the Chinese dance, very detailed. You're talking about uh, watching how the hands move, how the facial expressions right. would follow the story. So all of that, the, the whole kind of body movements carrying the meaning and the feeling of the story, that part is very important you for know the what, Chinese dance. You know dance. what is interesting to me is that if you take the classical ballet, whether it's any Western ballet, French, Russian, whatever, it's true, you get these angular or these straight lines, and um, it, then if you shift, I'm sorry to keep going back to mm -hmm. the, uh, the uh, food situation, but if you shift to many of the classical designs for dining tables in uh -huh. Western culture, you've got a rectangular, a square table with angular lines. That's true. And if you take the movements that you're talking about, uh -huh. these, these circles or spinning or uh, flips, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, the circular movement in the Chinese Shen Yuan dance and you rotate it horizontally back to the dining table example. That's what you have. You, you <laughs> get the round, the round table that, that seats that's 10 right, people, yeah. you know? But here's the thing, the dance is a, is a carrier of a, a culture. So Shen Yun really wants to use the dance to revive the entire culture. So that's why you see the um, Shen Yun dancers really embody the culture itself. But it's so fascinating to me, and we'll get into this after the break, coming up here, is that the whole Shen Yun performance, despite its attempt to revive or bring out an older culture, is not made in China. That's the story. That's the story, and we'll get into that when we come back after the break. We'll see you then. Aloha, I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech Hawaii, broadcasting live from the Pioneer Plaza in downtown Honolulu. We raise public awareness about tech, energy, and globalism in Hawaii. Technology is critical to our state. A vibrant tech sector will give us new prospects in the global marketplace and will offer great careers and make our economy more resilient. Streaming live on Ustream and Spreaker, ThinkTech allows its hosts and guests invaluable opportunities to report important events and discuss important questions and to be heard here in Hawaii and around the world. You can find links to our live streams on thinktechhawaii.com or on our mobile website, m.thinktechhawaii.com. And you can see our archive on YouTube. It's all just a click away. We want to do whatever we can to keep Hawaii relevant, connected, and thriving in the complexity of the 21st century. We hope you will help us in those efforts. Tune in today. This is ThinkTech. I'm Jay Fidel. Mahalo. We're back. You're watching Asian Review. And our special guest is the Tuesday host of Asian Review, uh, Ms. Hong Jing. And uh, Hong, Hong, I gotta tell you, I am enjoying this show so much. Well, me too. And, and I, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I hope you are too, because you know we, we've all seen the, the Blaisdell sign, Shen Yuan, and it's, it comes and goes really quickly. You know, it's, it's, not, a, it's not a cheap show to see. Um, um, and we've heard rumors about it, but just spending this time with you is just priceless to really understand what the what's what's really behind this show. Mm -hmm. And that's that's what we're getting at. Okay, the Shen Yuan production. Made in China? Not made it made in China. A lot of people think, oh, Chinese show made in China. It's not made in China. The two things that's going simultaneously. One is uh, this is to me 
as a China scholar, the most authentic Chinese show I've ever seen. The best not made in China, though. The best show I've ever seen, not made in China. How can that be, right? And we talk about how the show uh, blends a lot of the uh, technology, Chinese Western musical instruments. Um, that's the form. The essence itself, itself is so Chinese. The stories are Chinese, taking from 5,000 years of Chinese culture and history. The values are the really most important um, of uh, the Shenyun performance. Uh, we talk about uh, having the best dancers and the, uh, the most gorgeous costumes, the backdrop and the, the orchestra and everything. I think what holds Shenyun together is the value. And that's the value you can see in the performers themselves. It's an American production. And it, it, it is made in the U U.S. And uh, it's an it's a international group, okay. basically, as you can see. see it's a performers coming from er everywhere. They don't even subcontract the costumes to be made overseas, correct? No, no, because uh, they actually have their own researcher for the costume team. Every year they have new costumes. Costumes new. made in New York? In New York. With their large team, I don't know how many people, they do research into the dynasties, the backgrounds, okay, 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 okay. everything. Well, come on. The audience wants to know, why, 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 it's not made why in China? is this Shen Yuan show not made in China? Why okay. is that? Let me um, give three kind of related messages here. One is uh, the Chinese culture has been disappearing in China since the communist rule, as we talk about it. Okay. Uh, and the cultural values are in opposite to the values of the, the ruling party, which is the communist party. So that's one thing. Shen Yun wants to bring back the authentic pre-communist Chinese cultural values. And, and the especially Chinese focusing government in on, Beijing does not want those. They don't like that, that part. The other thing that, that Shen Yun is so unique is, as, as you see from the performer profile, is that they believe if you perform the traditional value, you need to be embody those values. Okay, but so the performers pick up the Falun Gong practice as their um, cultivation to become more ingrained in the traditional Chinese culture, and they have the Falun Gong meditation as part of their daily training. Wow. So Falun Gong, you heard, you know, it's a traditional practice in China that's been undermined, persecuted in China since 1999. That's another thing about the Shen Yun here that uh, has uh, looked upon the Falun Gong practice as the embodiment of the modern, the modern day um, Chinese traditional value, and they, uh, the performers, take on, take upon Falun Gong. Okay, Gong. quick summary. So those are the we have this spectacular, breathtaking, international production that has its uh, its uh, heart, spirit, and soul based in China, rooted the, in the Chinese culture, rooted yeah. in the culture, but the 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 production. The management, the creativity is all based in New York. Exactly. This is the uh, Chinese artistry production in the world. The most cosmopolitan because their uh, choreographers are from China. Okay, but is this show performed in China? Uh, that's another story. No, it's not, at this point, not allowed in China. So the Asia Pacific troupe would go to the Asia Pacific area around all the countries, uh, the Japan and Taiwan, and, um, the Australia, New Zealand, skip China right over there. One year, a couple years ago, there were a few shows scheduled in, in Hong Kong. Right. You know, today, Hong Kong is part of China. Correct. So scheduling Hong Kong is sold out very quickly, uh, about to be sold out, um, because you know people know about the show. So. Uh, the Chinese government intervened, did not allow You're kidding the me. visa You're kidding of the me. technicians to go. They said, well, your performers can come, but you have to hire local technicians. You know how important the backdrop is. Right. It's part, You've integral about part okay. of the show. So if technicians don't go, they don't have the show. So did they cancel the show? They had to cancel the show. Oh, my. Had to return all the tickets. So I think, I'm hoping that the next step for Shen Yun is to go to Hong Kong. They, they, they continue to make an effort to go to Hong Kong. And in Taiwan, they have sold out shows every year, uh, multiple shows occupying all major cities. And when they go to Hong Kong, Chinese people from mainland China can travel to Hong Kong and see the show. And hopefully that'll yeah. somehow get closer to going to China. It's just, it's just a, a, a mind blower when you think about it that, that 
you have an authentic Chinese show <coughs> that's not made in China and cannot be performed in China. There's a um, kind of a silver lining there for us here. I keep saying we have the show now, and the show is traveling to all different uh, major cities, uh, major countries in the world, uh, over uh, over 100 cities in the world. Uh, the, the show is performing, f full companies performing every year. Do you remember, if they ever go to China, we can't see it because there'll be so much in demand that we can't. Th th they won't be able to perform, perform but, but, in Honolulu. Do, do you realize how crazy this is? I know it th is. Th th that we can learn and enjoy yeah. about the, the Chinese culture, yeah. and the Chinese cannot. But it really speaks about the condition in the society of China. You know, we know there are a lot of issues there. Uh, there is really not room for freedom of expression and artistic uh, expression there in China. And, you know, for the benefit of the, all Chinese in the world, it would be good if China can open up to allow a show like this to go there because this is just so beautiful and Chinese people um, have the right to enjoy it. And actually, some Chinese do come out, uh, fly out of China to, to see the show. I've had people um, coming to Honolulu <laughs> and see the show. Maybe, maybe, it, maybe it's good because it promotes tourism in, in Hawaii. That's right. You know, ladies and gentlemen, we have more to come. We're going to take uh, a short break here, but stay with us because uh, we've got uh, Hong captured for the balance of this program, and I suspect she's got some interesting things uh, to say in the continuation of this conversation about the Shen Yuan Show. We'll see you on the other side of the break. Hi, I'm Attila Saras, host of Next Big Thing, a think tech show where we give people a place with great ideas, a chance to share them with the world. Be sure to tune in this Friday from 4 to 4.50 p.m., and I will see you there. Aloha, I'm Jay Fidel of ThinkTech. We have some news for you. In addition to our ThinkTech TV show and our Asia in Review show on Olelo 54, as of January 1st, we're adding Community Matters to play also two hours a week. Check out thinktechaway.com for the specific times of each of these shows. We hope you enjoy all three. Mahalo, I'm Jay Fidel. Aloha, I'm Maria Kashem of Think Tech Hawaii, and I want to tell you about our Think Tech talk shows. If you didn't know it, Think Tech streams video and audio for all of its shows live on the internet from 2 to 5 p.m. every weekday afternoon, and we replay them all night long on Ustream.tv. Visit ThinkTechHawaii.com for our live stream and YouTube links. Raise your awareness on Think Tech. I'm Maria Kashem, and I'll see you there. We're back. You're watching Asian Review here on Think Tech Hawaii. And we are again, just as a reminder, we're broadcasting from the belly of the beast here. That's the business beast on Bishop Street, uh, right here on uh, Pioneer Plaza. And this is Asian Review. I'm your host, David Day. And our host for this show, normally on Tuesday afternoons, same time, same slot, is Ms. Hong Jang. And nice, Hong, nice to uh, put you in, uh, in, in the work category today. Nice to sit in, in this chair. <laughs> <laughs> we, what we did was, ladies and gentlemen, is we captured Hong with her expertise on the Shen Yuan show. And so what we've been doing is kind of unzipping that whole show, the philosophy, philosophy behind it, and uh, what's been going on. If you just joined us, you might want to uh, uh, tr try to see a rebroadcast of this program because uh, we've, we've shown you a lot of beautiful videos and, and photographs uh, in talking about the background of this show. And earlier in the program, Hong, you talked about this whole interesting um, high-tech 3D concept that was used that is used in the background, and then in the last segment of the show, you talked about the the inability to, to run the production in Hong Kong because the technicians weren't allowed, and, and the Shen Yuan production out of New York said, "Sorry, we're not going to Hong Kong because of the restrictions on our technicians." So it seems to me that that the production incorporates a lot of, of uh, high tech modern technology, and yet at the same time it's trying to 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 preserve an ancient Chinese philosophy and spirit and art and culture. I mean, is there is there a contradiction there? Um, that. That is an interesting point you brought up because uh, it would be a seeming contradiction um, because the form 
uh, is very modern. But um, I think I think about it. Uh, it's the modern technology that actually had allowed the fuller expression of the Chinese culture in a, in, a, in a sense. Because like I said, a lot of these Chinese cultural stories, you read about it in the heavens uh, and uh, the mountains and people flying here and there, uh, the Buddhist paradise, and it's very hard to perform that uh, in a traditional kind of way in the ancient times without the technology. So the technology allowed that to be expressed to the modern audience. So here, we have to think about the audience. It's the okay. people in the whole of the world. Um, so therefore, I think Shen Yun is very much uh, having the eye on the audience to see what would be recepted by the audience. And we need to perform it in the way that they can hear the message. And uh, the message itself is really guiding what would be used as a mean to convey that message. I think it, it works beautifully. And uh, okay. even the costumes with the with the lighting, they don't do any f uh, other lights, just white light. Okay, but the costume itself is so beautiful itself. It's just it, it, uh, there are no words to, to describe it. And that's also uh, because of the stage effect. You know, I want to move into what we would call the CIA portion of this show now. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I don't know if you can answer the question, but I know that. I'm interested in the question and the answer, and I know our audience is, and it has to do with the Shen Yuan show coming to Honolulu. Yeah. And you said earlier that it's May, what are the dates? May again? 7 to 9. 7 to 9, okay. So here's the CIA question on the, in, the, uh, the intel side. Do you know, can you tell us what the what we can expect to see in this year's show? What's the... Okay. Come on, I mean, do you know? Do you know? I actually don't. I, I, ha oh, I, I don't. Right. The only thing I can tell is uh, they're going to have uh, just a tremendous show incorporating all these different components we've been talking about. The form of the show remain the same, but uh, in the entire dance and costumes and stories and music, everything is brand new. The, the one thing I do know is that every year they'll have a, one episode of the Monkey King story, the Journey to the West story, different episode. Why do they do that? Uh, it, it's a very important classic um, kind of a, a story in the Chinese culture, and they do these classics. And so, so in recent years, I think they made it a tradition of making a one episode every year. And they draw on different stories. I have no idea what stories they're going to draw on this year, but they reach new heights every year. And that's all that it's making the Shen Yuan show really exciting to watch every year. So I've been watching the show every year since 2008, when they, since they came here, and ex, uh, you know, with anticipation and excitement, I wait every year to see. OK, we're almost out of time. Tell our audience. You know, you, they, they've watched the show, they're interested, they're excited. Um, is the show sold out or can they still get tickets? You know, oh, oh you know? so, uh, yeah, they can get tickets because uh, the, the sale just started, basically. And um, that's, where is that? And uh, so the show is at the Blaisdell. It's May 7th through the 9th. It's Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Each in the evening starts 7.30 p.m. It's a two-hour show with the intermission. So there's an independent mission in between there. And uh, what else to tell? Um, go to the Blaisdell box office or Ticketmaster to buy, to buy tickets. There's a one website uh, the audience members can probably watch, uh, log into, which is shenyuan.com. Shenyuan.com? Shenyuan.com. Very you know what? easy. We're, we're out of time. Thank you for, for uh, teaching us all about this incredible production. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been watching Asian Review here. Um, the real host is Ms. Hong Jiang. I'm David Day. Please have a safe drive home and good night. <laughs>